Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabi ilah wa ba'd To continue these words of advice that relate to Al-Mar'atul Muslimah The woman in this time, in this era Despite the challenges that she faces with the society that we live in Al-Mar'atul Muslimah, her status is great in Islam Makanutuha sharifa azima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her status in his noble book. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well in his noble sunnah. That we understand how great the position of the woman is. That the woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned her with ahsan al-ta'rif. With the best of descriptions. Her role and her part. For verily, as I mentioned in my previous visit, they are half of society and they produce the second half. They either make the society go well or destroy it. The women in Islam, they play that role. Their role is so sensitive. And I was mentioning earlier, they are the backbone of society. The women, they are our ummuhat, our mothers. Our banat, our daughters, our sisters in Islam, the women, this manzila that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, it's a responsibility that each one of them will be questioned about. So it's constant that we remind our sisters with the position. For verily, we live in a society that the most targeted of people is the women in, as a whole. Women and children are the most targeted by those who wish to pollute them and corrupt them and take them out of their modesty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them, gave them. That you found that they are on every display calling them to immodesty, calling them to indecency, calling them al-khuruj min al-haya, to leave off haya, shyness. And to be someone that tries to resemble the opposite gender. And this is a scary affair for really the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that لَعَنَ اللَّهِ الْمُتَرَجِّلَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاء May the curse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala be upon the women who imitate the men. This is a serious affair that people are giving this impression to do the same qualities that perhaps are specific to men, to resemble them, to be immodest, to come out and display themselves in a manner as men display themselves. So this is a topic that I wanted to speak about, the challenges that a Muslim, the Muslim female faces in this time and era that we are going through. We see that the temptations, the distractions, they're displaying it as a means of entertainment. They're displaying it as a means of attraction for whatever they wish to give or sell is to put the woman out there in a form that she's immodest and to take her away from educating herself about her religion. So one of the things that I want to mention that the Muslima, she is upon her as well to learn her deen and to strive and act upon that. Talib al-ilm, seeking knowledge, is not only compulsory upon men. It is compulsory as well upon the women. They should learn from the Qur'an as men are learning from the Qur'an. They should have teachers amongst themselves as men have teachers amongst themselves. They should have a role in their community as the men have a role in their community. They should be there knowing that the first schooling is the schooling of the mother. They said, Al-Ummu Madrasatun in A'dattaha, A'dattaha, Sha'ban Tayyib al-A'raqi. That if a woman is the first schooling, if you prepare her, you prepare a good nation to come. So the real nation that is successful is what starts from what they're taught by their mothers. So that tarbiyah, that cultivation, could not only come 
except by a woman giving effort to learning her deen. Do not be one who expects the Islamic schools or the duxies to teach your children and your children to miraculously come and become the best kid in the area. But you play that role. You play that role at home. If you are someone that lies at home, do not blame anyone if your son or your daughter comes out to be someone that lies. If you are someone who cheats and is known to be disloyal and does, does certain things to cheat others, and your son or your daughter is witnessing this, this may be a reason of why your children become corrupt. No one is to blame except ourselves. Al-Ummu Madrasatun, the mother is the first calling. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this very important and clear that the best of people are best to the woman and educating them, teaching them, giving them a hand to guidance and teaching them the best characteristic that a woman should have is al-haya, shyness. Al-haya is being referred to as something dispraiseworthy in a society that we live in. A woman, if she's shy or she's modest, she's looked down at, even by her fellow Muslim sisters. They say to her, you're out of place. You are someone that are making others awkward. So no, in fact, I'm uh, adhering to the real honor. The honor for the woman is adhering to shyness and modesty. And how she speaks and how she displays herself, all of that is part of shyness. And shyness only comes with goodness. So the topic of uh, the, what the woman may face in society today, there's a number of topics that we can speak about. From what the woman may face in particular, is what our brother mentioned, Abu Suleiman, Hafizahullah, is the topic of hijab. The hijab, people are waging war at the hijab, and they see it as their biggest obstacle from taking a woman from her state of modesty and to bringing her to indecency. They see that hijab, that veil, to be a protection for her, to be a guardian for her from many evil acts. That hijab, there's a reason behind it. That hijab is a protection for her, for her heart, is a protection for her as an example for her children. That hijab is not something that a woman just puts on, but it really affects her and her character. And you find that she's actually respected. She's actually respected. Even though some may conceal that, but deep inside the non-Muslims know that this is a form of honor for her. A form of honor. That it is a real form of beauty for the woman that she's covered and veiled, not displaying her beauty to everyone and to any place. To know that she is precious in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the first place of them to adhere to their modesty is by adhering to their homes. Unless there is a need of going out for education purposes or of that of their needs, of what they may need from this worldly life, but not to be constantly outdoors, <coughs> from one place to another. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّا وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجُ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى Adhere to your homes. Don't make it something constant that you're always outdoors, with no need from one place to another. And do not walk in the roads and the pathways in a way that resembles pre-Islamic ignorance. That the woman in the past, as Mujahid, when he gave the tafsir of this ayah, كَانَ تَمْشِي فِي وَسَطِ الرِّجَالِ وَلَا تُبَالِي She used to walk in the midst of men, intermingling, without any shyness or modesty. She can display herself in front of them how she, how, as she wishes. 
she can do what she wants in front of them as she wishes and nothing will really affect her. But Al-Mar'atul Muslima, she knows when she goes outdoors, she tries to come out in the best of manner, not to attract the opposite gender or be to one that brings attention to herself or any fitna, and as well not to give a bad example for her children. That the woman, if she's one that is modest, even in her, how she, the color of her clothing. The time of the Prophet wasallam, they would use color of the clothing that is the less of attraction. The less attractive type of clothing, they would go for it. For example, the color black. It's not necessary in wajib for them to wear the color black. But the more darker the color, the better it is. The more darker and less attraction the color of her clothes, the better it is. They said the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha gave the description غربان, as if they are black crows. Meaning that their color of their gowns or their jilbab and their scarves and that was the color of black. It was darkened, the color. So she's allowed to wear other colors but she tries to avoid those colors that are very attractive. And colors that bring so much attention to her. That is number one, as a woman. Despite that at times, uh, this society, they deem a person, if they don't wear so much colors, and doesn't attract attention to her, self with fashion, she's looked down at. That's one obstacle that a Muslim woman is facing concerning her appearance. The next affair is regarding her voice, how she speaks and conducts herself. Al-Mar'atul Muslima, she has even haya, modesty in how she speaks. Especially with the opposite gender. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا فَلَا تَخْضَعْنَ بِالْقَوْلِ فَيَطْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضِ وَقُلْنَا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not be one who engages in speech with soft words. Whereas the one who has a sickness in his heart arises of desire. وَقُلْنَا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا And say words that are mannerable, honorable. That you can tell when she speaks, she's an honorable woman. She's a woman of character. She's a woman of dignity. You respect her even how she speaks. You respect her for her shyness. You respect her for her modesty. A woman that she doesn't just soften her voice as she goes about and talks, but she knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her to conduct herself in a manner that is honorable and in, in a manner that suits this Muslim, al Mar'a, this woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her the status. So, as well, she doesn't try to raise her voice so loud to attract, attract so much attention. Some of the scholars they took from this ayah, that as well the woman, when she's in an area where she doesn't need to raise her voice so loud, or there's no good purpose for her to raise her voice, she should, or her voice shouldn't be loud where other people can hear. Especially in the masajid, where you're praying and then you hear the voices of the woman so loud, perhaps louder than the men. That can be something that is harmful. Harmful for her as a woman that calling to this characteristic of modesty. The next one is concerning how she strives for how she strives for in the society to not make her standard what the women are upon today. She makes her mi'yar. Her goal is to be inspired by the early women of the past. If we find a lot of women nowadays, they judge to see who's their example by the women of today. They go meet a certain woman, or they see a woman uh, in their area or in their neighborhood, and they may judge how they should be according to those women. But we say, no, the woman should always look to the best of examples. The best the examples of the Sahabiyat, the female companions. The best of women. These women 
are those who you should look up to. As well, the criterion that has been given for the woman is what is displayed on social media. What, how a personality of a woman is given, as the brother Abu Sulaiman spoke about. A lot of women, they start to lose confidence about their Muslim identity. And start to go on social media and slowly try to compare themselves to this female Muslim lady and to that. And gradually, shaitan comes to her from this door. And then you see her beginning to get weaker and weaker in religion. And as we mentioned, the two most targeted groups <coughs> of the people are the women and children. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أُحَرِّجْ عَلَيْكُمْ حَقَّ ضَعِيفَيْنِ الْيَتِيمِ وَالْمَرْأَةِ I make it extremely uh, important and extremely a matter of concern the affair of the woman and the affair of the orphan. He said the affair of the woman. But why did he say the affair of the woman? Because it comes in a hadith of Abdullah Mas'ud that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mar'atu awra. The woman is a reason for the shaitan to come and take her out of her Modesty to bring her out to display her beauty. Al Mar Awra Faida Kharajat is Tashrafaha Shaitan. And when she goes out doors, the Shaitan tries to deceive her and bring in temptation to her and try to bring temptation by her. So it comes some wordings to show that the woman the shaitan tries to use them as the ropes that he pulls others by and distracts them by. So the woman is in a constant battle that he, she's living in a society that she is targeted by the enemies of Islam and also by the greatest enemy, shaitan. So it is a battle upon a battle. It is a jihad, jihad al nafs. She's fighting against what she may have to go through in the society, and also against the whispers of the devil. And her reward is great in the sight of Allah, for she, if she's patient. The one, the Muslima, al-mar'atul Muslima, the Muslim woman who is patient upon a religion in this time, especially in this society, her reward is great. Inna ajraki ala qadri nasabiki. Verily, your reward is according to the difficulty that you go through. So this was said to Aisha radiallahu anha by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So sometimes we feel down, we're taken by society. We see all what we're going through is hard to practice. We remind ourselves with this hadith. Verily your reward is according to the difficulties and the challenges that you face. So we get messages from certain sisters mentioning that she's going through a lot of challenges of wearing hijab. She's going through a lot of challenges of practicing her deen. She's wearing, going through a lot of challenges at work. All of this we remind them that you being patient upon your religion, despite these challenges, your reward is great in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We live in a time with a lot of burdens, especially upon the woman. Obstacles upon obstacles. Society, as we mentioned, they're targeting, number one, the woman. They're trying to remove them from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them naturally of modesty. It's a natural characteristic for the woman. If you even see if, if I'm a young daughter, how shy they grow up. But they, when they're taken and exposed to society, that natural shyness is taken away from them, snatched away. So you find her... She's no longer shy to just to be one who may not do certain things. She's not shy about indecency. She's not shy about people knowing certain things about her. All of that goes out the window. So, akhawati fil-Islam, oh fellow sisters 
and Islam, we remind each other that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that المؤمنون, المؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض. The male and female believers are allies to one another. They're allies to one another by advising each other. They advise, they advise each other by reminding them of the statement of Allah, إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات To the end of the verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا That all of these categories, whether it be male or female, those who adhere to their religion and the remembrance of Allah, for verily for them is a great reward and much forgiveness. So you have to remind yourself, النِسَاءَ شَقَائِقُ rijal. The women are the half parts of men, meaning that it applies to them the rulings. It applies to them the rulings, what applies to men. Same way that is encouraged for a sister to learn about her salat, or the same way that is encouraged for a man to learn about his salat, is encouraged for the woman to learn about her salat, and to give attention to that. I once traveled to Guyana, and I met a lot of people that were adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. They had classes for the men and the children, but I didn't see much attention for the woman. And a lot of complaints were coming that the, some of the women, in specific some of the wives of the brothers, weren't praying. And this perhaps will be a person, he is giving so much attention to the house of Allah. He's giving so much attention to teaching others and his own family of the females are there falling short. People do not remind the sisters that they are obliged as well as the men are obliged to learn about the religion, to adhere to the salat. It's sad to hear we have sisters in our community that few from them pray. Few from them adhere to praying five times. The encouragement is not there because when they accompany other female sisters who do not pray, it takes away from their zeal to holding to the religion. Some of the sisters, they'll bring their children to us and they say, teach my son Qur'an, teach him this, teach him that, teach him about salat, and her herself doesn't pray. Her herself doesn't read the Qur'an. Little can I do. Little I can put forward for her son because the son is going to see the first example is his mother. He's going to say, why, am I have to, why do I have to pray and you don't pray? Why do I have to recite the Qur'an and I never see you pick up the book of Allah? It's very important. We see these issues. It's happening in specific in Toronto where we're being given young boys and daughters to teach and we see that the parents are falling short themselves in this aspect. The first duksi should be at home. The duksi of teaching them the good example, that the mother is at least trying. If the child sees that the mother is trying and making that effort, he will as well make that effort. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since Maghrib is near, to make these words, words that benefit us all, and to reach the bottom of our hearts. For really the reminder benefits the believer. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَا تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it becomes a reason of goodness for us and our families. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ